Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood people for the penultimate time. I'm beginning this penultimate episode outside of the church here in this place, the tower of which you can see on your screens right now. That's going to be our first landmark, but there's plenty to see in this one. More than I thought actually, when I planned this route, I knew there was a few things of interest, but I've discovered since there's a few more. Welcome to Blidoth. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Parish number 83 of 84 in Newark and Sherwood, it doesn't seem real that this is the last one before the grand finale. I've got a cracker for you today. This is Blidith, located right on the western edge of the district, close to the boundaries with Ashfield and Gedling. Its name means Blither's Enclosure and derives from Old English. It was, like Redith, important for coal mining, but that's just one of the things it can say it's famous for. Away from mining, Blidoth is still within shouting distance of Edwinstow, so of course there are links to Robin Hood here. According to legend, Will Scarlet, one of his merry men, is buried in the churchyard, although it's more likely that if he did exist, he was actually buried in a much older grave within Sherwood Forest. Local legend also suggests that Blidoth was the birthplace of Maid Marian, although there's little or no evidence to support that. Out to the west of the village there's a curious stone, which has an even more curious name. But perhaps most interestingly, this is perhaps the only place in the world which still performs an ancient ceremony, something which is immortalised now in the village centre by way of a sculpture. By and large, Blidoth has way more than meets the eye. Time to go and check it all out. Our start point in Blidoth is the Church of St Mary of the Purification, one of four religious buildings in the village. This one originated in the 15th century and only the West Tower survives from that building. The rest was built in 1739 by Rhodes of Barbara and in 1839 by Colvin. It's made of ashlar and has a lead roof. The tower has two clocks, one facing west, the other east, meaning the time is visible to people approaching from either direction along Main Street. This is also reputed to be the burial place of Will Scarlet, one of the most prominent members of Robin Hood's Merry Men. A piece of the original church serves as his memorial. How about this for fascinating as well? The modest churchyard includes a model of the original 15th century church. This was created in 1963. Of all the graves in the churchyard, this one caught my eye the most. Several members of the Parsons family lie here, a name synonymous with the local area. 
So I was going to have a look around inside this one because I thought it was open. The porch door was open, but unfortunately the one on the inside of the porch leading into the church was not. So that scuppered that plan. Never mind, there's still plenty more to see here in this one. So let's head back out of the gates and turn right. We're heading for the village centre. A walk up Main Street takes us past two pubs. Here's the first and it's called the Bird in Hand. This is known to the locals as the pub with a view because it sits at the highest point in the village overlooking the Nottinghamshire countryside. It's also the venue for Blidfest, an annual music festival held every July. Next up is an old school. I'm not totally sure if this is the one, but Blidworth once had a national school which was built in 1847. This building does look old enough. Speaking of old houses, how about these? Rocking a very Tudor-like style, the house on the right is Mabel's Cottage and on the left, Hill Cottage. Then we come to the Black Bull, which has been an alehouse since at least 1730. After being brewery owned for a while, since 2012 it's been in private ownership. The Methodist Church marks religious building number two of four in the village. There's been a church on this site since 1787. Do you ever get the feeling it's not your day? I had all those problems in Lindhurst, didn't I, in that episode? And here in Blidworth, I've got another issue. I'm supposed to be walking across a footpath here. You can see where it's meant to go, but it's blocked off thanks to these very kind builders. There's a new estate being built here. The path is supposed to cross this and head towards the main sort of shopping bit in this village, but I can't use it because, as you can see, it's uh, inaccessible. No big deal, no big deal. I'll just turn around here and we'll go via uh, the road. It's a bit longer, but uh, never mind. Do me some good, won't it? This next area is all about memorials. Here on a small green is the War Memorial, bearing a total of 74 names from both World Wars and the conflicts in Afghanistan and Northern Ireland. Then we have a board about Matthew Clay, a Blidworth lad born in 1796. In 1815 he would serve in the Battle of Waterloo. Fortunate never to have been wounded, he was eventually discharged from the army at his own request in 1833 when he became Sergeant Major of the Bedfordshire Militia, a rank he held until 1852. Next is a well bearing a plaque memorialising a local man. I was loving how pretty this whole area looked. Top job with the flowers, guys. And now we're at Forest Folk Corner. Here I'm pointing out to you the Sherwood Forest Community Church, which stands behind a petrol station. There's a commemoration here for James Pryor Kirk. He was the author of a novel called Forest Folk, which one of Blither's former pubs was named after. Now remember at the beginning of this video I said there were some more things that I hadn't planned for. This is what I was talking about. Take a look at this sculpture at Forest Folk Corner. That's a crib and this is to do with the Blidworth Rocking Ceremony. Sounds interesting doesn't it? Well I'm going to tell you all about it now. Erected in 2010 and known as the Rocking Sculpture, this immortalises the 13th century rocking ceremony, during which a solitary baby boy is rocked in a cradle on the Sunday nearest to Candlemas, known as the Feast of the Purification of Mary. The boy chosen must have married Christian parents, live in Blidworth, and of all the newborns in the village, he must be the one born closest to Christmas Day. This all takes place at St Mary's Church, believed to be the last one in the world to still perform this ceremony. It's a symbolic enactment of a story from the Bible found in Luke's Gospel, depicting the presentation of Christ at a temple. They've been using the same crib since the tradition was revived in 1922. Now how do I follow that? I'm not sure if I can to be honest, but we're off up towards the village centre now, passing both an independent school called Real and the Hatsfeld House Care Home on the way. Time to check out all those local shops. Okay now we're coming to the main shopping bit and there's a bus stop here. 
you can catch two services here the 141 and the 28 and if you do get off the bus here you're right outside the post office it's that building over there and the main shops let's go and explore them So far, everything we've seen has been old Blidith, and now we're heading for new Blidith, which developed with Blidith Colliery. To get there, we have to pass all the local shops. Blidith does pretty well for itself. It has several shops, including a premier store and a nicer, which doubles as the post office. Amongst others, there's also a library, a hair salon, a pizza takeaway, a charity shop, and a butcher's too. This Chinese takeaway, Lee's Garden, was quite notable, as it has a date stone of 1925. Blidith also has a surgery run by Abbey Medical Group and a pharmacy next door, so healthcare needs are fully looked after here too. There's also a couple of shops selling specifics too, like Blidith Blinds, which is a family business that's been trading since 1990. I'm all for local business. Eventually, we come to Blidith Leisure Centre, part of the Active for Today group, the same group who run the centres we've already seen in Southall and the Dukeries Complex in Ollerton. And right outside the leisure centre, you've got a mining memorial for Blidith Colliery. Even though what I've shown you so far would give you the impression it's not a mining village, trust me, it most definitely was. And here is the proof. The mining wheels, the winding wheels, and this amazing mosaic underneath. Remembering the men who worked down the mines. Next is the fire station, complete with a small war memorial. This sits on the edge of an industrial estate which was formerly the site of Blidith Colliery. On the end of Burma Road is the Miners Welfare Club, and behind this there's a sports area where Blidith Welfare Football Club were formed in 1926 as folk household boys. Now we're entering New Blidith along Bellevue Lane. It's here we find a school, Blidith Oaks Primary, which only last year became an academy. With the exception of a few infill areas, we're now in the pit village. At one time, these streets would have been teeming with miners, but 20th century industry wasn't just limited to coal. There were other industries in Blidith, including factories for the manufacture of shoes, hosiery, textiles, and metal products. We're now on the Crescent, which bends around to the left towards the last of the four religious buildings in Blidith. And right in the middle of the Crescent, you've got this building, which I don't know whether it's wood or whether it's made of iron that's just been painted. Anyway, it's St. Andrew's Mission Hall. That's what you're looking at right now. And dead opposite this is Lyndhurst Avenue. There we go. Another street, which is clearly very pit themed, isn't it? It's got that classic pit style housing that we're used to seeing in mining villages. We're gonna head straight down this back to the southern part of Blidith. All these streets between Bellevue Lane in the north and Dale Lane in the south are lined with that classic model village housing we're so used to seeing. There's a couple of shops on this estate too, ideal for if you can't get to the main road. Unlike Renneth, Blidith's mine was the work of the Newstead Colliery Company. In total, they acquired some 220 acres for housing, facilities and the mine itself. A further 160 were gained for spoil tips by purchasing three farms, one of which received £16,000, the modern day equivalent of three and a half million. Although it was sunk in 1926, mining didn't really take off here until 1931, owing to complications with the ground. Blidith would close in 1989. Now we reach Dale Lane, the southernmost extent of the pit housing. It's on this road we come to the allotments. And on the corner of Haywood Oaks Lane is a memorial to Private Andrew Cutts, a local soldier killed in action during Operation Snakebite in Hellman Province in 2006. OK, the final stage of the route sees us climb a hill. We're heading for a track on the right hand side which will take us to Beck Lane and back to the beginning.
The remainder of the route takes us down Beck Lane via a small track with some great views. This bench here simply reads, in memory of Brian Hagen, enjoy this moment. Well Brian, if you can hear me, I can confirm I did indeed enjoy the view from your bench. We're now at Beck Lane, which is a collection of both the very old and the very new in terms of property. I reckon this part of Bloodeth has some of the most characterful and charming properties. Among it all is Will Scarlet Close. There's no prizes for guessing how this street gets its name. Scarlet, by the way, is present in the earliest ballads associated with Robin Hood, along with Little John and Much the Miller's Son. That house in front of us here is called Pinfold, so I'd imagine at one time there was one of those around here somewhere. We are now back to Main Street, and that's completed the main walk. Almost. There was one more thing, though, that would get the old grey matter working. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm nothing if not curious. I've just seen this little hole in the wall here. I'm just going to have a poke my head in and see what it is. I genuinely don't know. <laughs> Maybe some kind of, I don't know, fire pit or something? Mind you, oh, it can't be a fire pit because there's no, there's no, seat, there's no uh, way for the smoke to get out. I wonder what that was. You can find this right next to the Methodist Church and the Black Bull, which is just around the corner there. I wonder what that's all about. Maybe you Blitheth locals can tell me what that was at one time. Who knows? There seems to be more than one. There's one there, and there's another one just here. Look. See? This one's got a, a curved sort of arch over it. You can't see for the ivy, but yeah, there's two there. They're very interesting, aren't they? Who knows? Secret tunnels? <laughs> Who knows? Right, we are done with the walk around Blitheth. All I've got to do from here is take myself back to the car, which is just beyond the church, parked just beyond the church. However, there is one more thing I do want to talk about here in Blitheth. Well, a couple more things actually thinking about it, but there's one more thing coming your way before I do a bit of driving, that's what I mean. And that is the Druid Stone. And you can get to that by walking beyond the church and down a footpath. I'm not going to do that because I'm a little bit pushed for time at the moment. I would need to be somewhere uh, in about half an hour's time. So I don't really have time to do it myself. But that's what special sections are for. On the outskirts of the village within some farmland lies a naturally formed rocky outcrop. It's a pillar of cemented glacial gravel. A monumental object, it stands 14 feet high and measures some 84 feet around its base. It's not solid. It has a hollow centre large enough for someone to pass right through the middle. This is known as the Druid Stone, but despite its name, there's no evidence to suggest that it has ever been used by the Druids. It's also sometimes known as the Altar Stone. It's likely the Victorians had a hand in its association with the Druids. At that time, interest in all things Druidical was immense, and thousands of natural boulders and archaeological sites were incorrectly associated with them. It leaves modern archaeologists with the head-scratching task of working out which ones actually had an involvement with them. Nonetheless, Blitheth Stone has, since 1999, been recognised by the District Council as a geological site of regional importance to nature conservation.
finish with, we're taking a drive through Blidith Bottoms, a small hamlet directly to the south of Old Blidith, which can be seen clearly from the bird in hand. The hamlet consists of Bottoms Farm, another pub called the Fox and Hounds, and a small number of houses. In the 19th century, a barn here was converted into a primitive Methodist chapel. Well attended in the 1860s, it had fallen into decline by the 1900s. The Fox and Hounds is a must for anyone who visits Blidith. A traditional English country pub, it was awarded a Certificate of Excellence from TripAdvisor in 2017, as well as an East Midlands in Bloom Gold Award for the best garden or display at a pub or hotel in 2014. It's beautiful. And with that, we're done with Blidith. I'm now on Rig Lane, driving south along the border with Gedling. There's one to go in Newark and Sherwood, and trust me, you won't want to miss it. I'll see you back here next week as the curtain falls on the district. Bye for now. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.